Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to our time of worship and celebration. It is certainly good to have you here, though times are different and still a blessing that we're able to get together, to be together as God's family in this place at this time. I'll also like to welcome those who are visiting with us at home. Uh, we have many people online this morning, and it is so good to have you with us. We worship together, even if we're in person or at home. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray, Almighty God, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of the world. Free us from all that darkens and ensnares us, and bring us to eternal light and joy, through the power of him who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
may be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Psalm 123, the refrain is, Our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us mercy. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in heavens, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid to the hand of their mistress. So our eyes look up to the Lord until he shows us his mercy. Our eyes look, eyes look to the Lord our God until he shows us mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and the derision of the proud. Our, our eyes look to the Lord, our God, until he shows us mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Once there was a man who was about to go on a journey. He called his servants and put them in charge of his property. He gave to each one according to his ability. To one he gave 5,000 gold coins. To another he gave 2,000, and to another he gave 1,000. Then he left on his journey. The servant who had received 5,000 coins went at once and invested his money, and earned another 5,000. In the same way, the servant who received 2,000 coins earned another 2,000. But the servant who received 1,000 coins went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The servant who had received 5,000 coins came in and handed them over to 5,000. You gave me 5,000 coins, sir. Look, here are another 5,000 that I have earned. His master said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had been given 2,000 coins 
came in. You gave me 2,000 coins, sir. Look, here are another 2,000 coins that I have earned. Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in managing small amounts, so I will put you in charge of large amounts. Come on in and share my happiness. Then the servant who had received 1,000 coins came in. Sir, I know you are a hard man. You reap harvest where you did not sow, and you gather crops where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid, so I went off and hid your money in the ground. Look, here is what belongs to you. You bad and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap harvest where I did not sow? and gather crops where I did not scatter seed? Well then, you should have deposited my money in the bank, and I would have received it all back with interest when I returned. Now take the money away from him and give it to the one who has 10,000 coins. For to every person who has something, even more will be given, and he will have more than enough. But the person who has nothing, even the little that he has, will be taken away from him. As for this useless servant, throw him outside in the darkness. There he will cry and grind his teeth. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear God, you bring us together this morning in the comfort of this building, the comfort of our homes, or where maybe we may be too at this time. Be with us as you stir our hearts and minds, that it may be directed towards your Son and the words that he has given us this morning to read and to reflect upon, and then to live out in our daily life. In his name now we pray your blessing, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. so good this morning to hear a little voice coming from the back. And as many of us have said many times, we so miss our children and youth here on, uh, on Sunday mornings. And you know, in so many and various ways, children and youth add to our lives. I know here they add so much, especially warmth and energy on Sundays. They're also amazing, of course, for many other reasons as well. Last weekend, on our street. There's a little back road just off the busy street where hardly anybody goes. It's a dead end, so unless you live there or visiting, you would never go. So the mom who moved in next door brought her little son out onto the back road, and her partner came out and took off the training wheels of her son's bike. Big day. Little friend came from across the road the same age in her bike with no training wheels. And so he'd try, and she'd kind of hold him up, and he'd fall, and he'd get up and dust his pants off again, and wouldn't cry because the girl was there from across the road, and he couldn't have that. He was a big boy, but he could tell. It was, it was almost tears there. Well, after a while, everybody was cheering him on and cheering him on, until finally, with the wobbles, you know how it works, he finally straightened her up, and he was able to go down the street by himself and turn around and come back up the road by himself. And of course... You could see the joy that was on his face as he came back up the road. He had figured this thing out. And I looked at his mom and he said, this is a, this is a proud day for you. And she smiled and I said, now, maybe he'll do the, the same thing I'd done the day after I learned how to ride a bike with her training wheels. I set up a ramp and tried to jump it. <laughs> Still got scars. But anyway, she didn't smile then. But I like doing that stuff. It was fun. But it was a big day for him. And young people are like that. They try things without fear. Again and again they will do it. Because in their mind, in their mind's eye, anything is possible. And all they can imagine is how wonderful life is going to be once they do or figure out or try and understand this new thing. But you know, the sad part is, as we grow older, sometimes... We don't like change. 
new things. Sometimes we develop fear about trying new things. Sometimes we think about failure and how it hurts so much. And so we are not so adventuresome. Sometimes we're just tired. Hard to try new, try new things when, when you're tired. Sometimes life happens. It gets so busy and we're so busy living, we keep, stop trying new things. No time, we tell ourselves. As such, we never live life to its full potential. Sometimes we even get stuck in a rut. We're unhappy and sad. And sometimes we're so unhappy we, we become depressed. We know that we haven't lived up to our potential and of course God knows that we haven't lived up to the potential he placed in us as well. In the Gospel this morning we see a rich business person. And before he leaves on an extended trip he passed so much wealth over to each individual servant. Sometimes they're called slaves. Various parts of the gospel. And he must have been rich. Although we don't know for sure, it is quite possible that one talent equaled five years daily wage. And to the first he gave five talents. Second he gave two and the third he gave one. And after his extended trip was over and he came back, he wanted an accounting of his funds. It was a time of reckoning. And so the first came in and said, you gave me five and I have five more. Good and faithful servant you are, said the master. The second came in and said, you gave me two, here is two more. Good and faithful servant, said the master. But the third came in and said, this is the one you gave me, and this is the one I gave you back. For I was afraid, and I buried your money until you return. The master called that servant a lazy servant, and even took the little that he had given him in the first place. So I guess the lesson for the gospel this morning is we do not want to be that guy who buried his talents and even had taken away the little that he had. You know, God gives all of us gifts, talents, according to our ability. And He wants us to be stewards of those gifts and talents, to help those gifts gifts and talents grow and to use them. And God then wants us to be accountable for the gifts and talents He gives us. Now in society today, it's all about what you own. Things are not looked at as a gift or as a privilege. But when it comes down to us, even our life, every breath we take, every time our heart beats, all the time we have, our possession, our talents, are really all gifts given to us by God to hold, to cherish, and to develop, and to grow for the betterment of ourself and the world. Now we're given different gifts and talents. That's a good thing, because it makes everything work. I know when Natasha comes up and sings, of course, we all smile, and the angels peek out over the clouds, and they smile as well. But every once in a while on a Sunday, when we get into a favorite song or hymn I like, I sing a little, a little louder than usual, and I can picture the angels sitting on a cloud, stuffing other clouds in the ears, almost like cotton. <laughs> Nobody smiles. And that dog across the pond is barking so much the owner is wondering if there's a coyote in the backyard or someone is trying to break in. And it's just that guy across the pond trying to sing again when he can't sing at home. But all our gifts are important. And we're not all meant to do the same thing, thank goodness. One complements the other, just like a beautiful puzzle. And if we don't use our gift, we know what happens when we put a puzzle together. There's pieces missing off the table or down under somewhere. That puzzle never comes together and that picture is never complete. The same with God's kingdom and how He all wants us to live as His people, as His family. When pieces are missing and do not fit, the picture does not come together. Now individually, sometimes we're not complete as well. We're never living up to our full potential. In some ways, we're like zombies wandering around. 
As a community, if a piece is missing, we're also not complete. We're just like a bunch of busy people living on the same spot of land, busy coming and going and doing their thing. The world also is not complete if there's pieces missing. And that's why we have injustice, lack of food and clean water and shelter and clothing, and a lack of peace in the world, mostly because of that injustice. The truth is, is that even as faithful people, we're not always faithful in everything. Parts of our life we're doing great, but there's other parts we're not so faithful as we should. And it can even start at home with a spouse or partner, family member or friend, you can work or school, a neighbor across the road or down the street, or somebody who we meet along the way, or even our body. We're not good stewards. And sometimes we're not good stewards even of our own prayer life and spirituality. Again, sometimes it comes out of fear. We're afraid of change, of things being different, of leaving our comfort zone. And sometimes we're tired and we see each and every day as survival. With the two feet on the floor and we survive until we take the two feet off the floor and put them back under the covers again that same night. Just hope we can make it to another day. Sometimes life happens. Life takes control of us and not the other way around. Again, we become that guy. That guy who buried his gifts and talents out of fear. He didn't do anything with them or about them. Again, we become that drone or that zombie. The living dead. Motions of life but never really fully alive. And in the most extreme situations, our gifts and talents are no use to us or to anybody else. But the good news is, and there's always good news as God's people, that even though we are not faithful in everything, Jesus is. And the good news doesn't stop there, because He forgives us if we have failed Him in any way, if we have buried our gifts and talents as that guy. But not only does He forgive us, then He helps us with courage and faith in our heart, with new vision in our eyes, to step out, to step forward, to become fully alive with our gifts and talents. And this to mean different things to different people. It might mean you're more compassionate with your partner or spouse, a little more listening to your friend, and wanting to take a little more time to have a cup of coffee, paying attention to our own body and what we do with it and put into it, eager to see the need in the community and not simply be busy and, and pass by, as it were, and want to fulfill that need. Maybe just a little more time in the morning, middle of the day, or the evening, listening, praying, reading maybe, about God to increase our spiritual life as well. Just like the little boy on the bike, he tried and tried till finally, in courage and faith and the vision that was in his eyes, he was able to fly down the road on two wheels and not four. More we use these gifts, the more fully alive we become, and the more our community benefits. But again, there's that one last thing, as we've seen in the Gospel this morning, with the little boy who rides the bike. That servant and the two servants who took that risk increased their gifts and talents to the benefit of themselves and their master. We too must take risks. Sometimes it's difficult. We too can fall without the training wheels. We too can get hurt, and nobody likes to fail. Nobody wants to be hurt. But in failure, we learn the things we're not good at, but we also learn the things that we are good at, so that we may have strength and wisdom to move past the things we cannot do so well, to develop and encourage each other in the things that we can. So it is good that we are able to be a puzzle piece in the picture of the kingdom of heaven on earth. So this week, as we move along, let us venture out 
as it were, take the training wheels off. Take that risk, have that courage, have that vision in our mind's eye of the life we could live if we fully develop all our gifts and talents. And just try to imagine as all those gifts and talents become alive and all the pieces start fitting together, the kind of life we would have, the kind of community we would live in, and what this world would be. Dear God, we ask this day for courage, for faith, for vision, that we may step out of our comfort zone, that we may take the training wheels off, we may look down the road ahead, and we may move forward with you within our heart, that our lives, this community, and this world may become the likeness of your kingdom. In your name we pray, Jesus Christ and Lord. Amen. We now make a statement of our faith as we confess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The day of the Lord is soon upon us. As children of light and of the day, let us await the coming of the Lord in prayer on behalf of the human family around the world, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are not ready for the coming of the Lord, for the unbelieving, the skeptical, the scorners, that they may be brought to faith and rejoice to confess the name of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who use their lips and lives to proclaim the good news of Christ's return, that they may persist in their zeal and be empowered through the gifts of your spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who with joy and longing await the return of the Messiah, that they may not grow weary in well-doing, but witness to the immediate and everlasting promise of our Holy Redeemer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those whose lives are marked by hunger and need, grief and loneliness, anger and strife, discord and uncertainty, that each may be assured of the grace and mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who suffer affliction of any kind, that God, their constant companion and champion, may grant them healing, hope, and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the communion of the Holy Spirit with Mary, the mother and son of God, and with all the saints in light, let us commend our lives and the lives of one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The sixth electoral synod, for the Anglican Diocese of Eastern Newfoundland and Labrador will be held on November 28th. The Episcopal Nominating Committee has confirmed the following candidates for consideration to the Office of Bishop. The Venerable Josiah Knoll, the Venerable Samuel Rose, the Reverend Jonathan Rowe, the Venerable Charlene Taylor, the Reverend Canon Gerald Westcott. Most gracious God, we humbly beseech thee for thy holy Catholic Church. Fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where anything is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen and confirm it. Where it is in want, furnish it. 
Where it is divided and rent asunder, make it whole again. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We remember those who have died, remembering especially today Bishop Jeff. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God of steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, he welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and live you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us pray. Lord God, in this Eucharist we renew our baptismal covenant. Help us through our offering this day to renounce all things that draw us from your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise you, merciful Father, not as we ought, but as we are able, because in your tender love you gave the world your only Son, in order that the world might be saved through him, and made you known by taking the form of a servant, healing the sick, liberating the oppressed, reaching out to the lost, Betrayed, reviled, and nailed to the cross, he confronted the power of sin and disarmed it forever. In his offering of himself, he became the perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Redeemed by Christ, we have been adopted as your children. By your pardon, you have made us worthy to praise you. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus had suffered with his friends, took bread gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. In obedience to him and with grateful hearts we approach your holy table, 
remembering our Savior's sacrifice and rejoicing in his victory, confident in his sovereign purpose, we declare our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit on us, that as we receive this bread and this cup, we may partake of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and feed on him in our hearts by faith and thanksgiving. May we be renewed in his life, filled with love, and strengthened in our will to serve others, and make of our lives, we pray, a pure and holy sacrifice acceptable to you, knitting us together as one in your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to shear in the body of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this sacrament we have shared the body and blood of Christ 
May we have been nourished by holy things, bear witness to his light, and share in his eternal priesthood, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And we now we sing our hymn, Love Divine, All Love Excel. Thank you. 